be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's going on, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. It's Rhonda. It's Sunday. It's the top of the week. Let's get this thing going. I'm happy to see y'all. I hope you're happy to see me. If this is your first time at the channel, I want to welcome you here. Please pull up a seat. I hope you enjoy the content. And before we get into all this food, I want to go ahead and ask that you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And also hit that bell. That'll notify you and let you know when I got new videos that drop and also when I go live. All right? So y'all ready to get into this food? Let's do it. Okay, so I got a lot of requests for Taco Bell, so here I am finally doing it. Um, I want to also show that you can just make modifications if you're meatless or if you want to like not eat as much meat or whatever like I'm doing right now. Um, so I got the Nacho Bell Grande. I got it with everything except meat. I have two bean and cheese burritos. I added extra onion and added sour cream. And then I have a Mexican pizza. All of, Just no meat. It has everything else besides that. All right, so let's get into it. I'm a mild sauce kind of girl, so I got to go with the mild on mine. And of course, I told him to give me a lot of sauce. I like, I love extra sauce. So. Happy Sunday. Top of the week. I got to go run a bunch of errands. Do a whole bunch of stuff today. I'm going to give y'all the first bite. Got some beans and tomatoes and sauce on it. I feel like I haven't had Taco Bell in forever. I like Taco Bell. I feel like I'll be trying to front on Taco Bell, but I like it though. Especially on a late night. Mm. So I wanted to say that. I don't feel like I'm missing anything without having the meat on it. Can you see that? So you guys seem to still be enjoying story time, so we're going to continue with that. If you are new to the channel, I am in the middle of a story time series. I think I've done six so, yeah, six so far. This is number seven. Um, so to get caught up, click on the playlist. I do have all the videos listed there if you want to get caught up on what's been going on. All right, so the last story we left off was my coming out story. Um... You all understand it, you know, my parents found out that officially I was a lesbian. Um, and, you know, we worked through everything. We did, you know. Like I said, my mom is going to be on the channel to really talk about her side of the story. So you guys had questions and she'll definitely be able to answer it, answer it um, from her perspective. So y'all stay tuned for that. But I'm just going to resume like with my relationships. So in part six, you guys heard me mention a girl named Zoe. And that relationship was cool. You know, we was together, like I said, about two years. So where I am in the story now is about the two-year mark for me and uh, Zoe's relationship, approaching the two-year mark. And things were just, eh, like, they were just kind of whatever. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't anything special about the relationship anymore. I feel like we were just kind of going through the motions kind of thing. Um, and that red sauce be dripping for y'all. Mm-mm-mm. I love that. Um... We were just kind of together. So let's just say we were together for like a year and a half at this point. We were living together. Y'all, I always live. I was always living with somebody. Lord. Um. So there was this girl named Kayla that I would talk to on Instant Messenger. But it wasn't like that. We was just cool. I had met Kayla. Mm, I met Kayla back when I was with Monique. We met at a club one day. Just randomly through a mutual friend. It was cool. Um, 
we became friends on MySpace. You know what I'm saying? She would like hit me up every now and then. And looking back, Kayla was always just kind of checking in to see if I was in a relationship or not, to see if I was available. Because like when she found out I had a girlfriend or whatever, she would always disappear. We wouldn't just continue talking as friends. So she resurfaced, you know, we started talking on Yahoo. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of bored in my relationship with Zoe. So actually this is gonna go into the first time that I ever cheated, y'all. Like I have definitely cheated. This is the first and last time I ever cheated. Well, Kayla starts hitting me up on Yahoo Messenger. And we're talking, it's cool. She's living in another state. She's from California, but living in another state at the time. So I'm asking about the state that she's living in. Um, I'm just kind of really getting to know her. You know what I'm saying? Like what she's in school for, what are her plans with life, you know, stuff like that. So she tells me, um, I will say that our, our conversations definitely started to get inappropriate. And I started just kind of getting into her attention and conversation because things were just so dry with me and Zoe. You know what I'm saying? So I started, you know, going down that rabbit hole of talking to another woman on Yahoo Messenger. And she was getting ready to come home, like, for the holidays or something like that or to visit her family. So she wanted to get together. As a matter of fact, she came in August. The timing was perfect because one of my cousin's birthdays is in August. So I knew that I would be able to get away for the weekend. And Zoe not asking any questions. Because she had stuff going on that weekend, too. So, I was like, hey, I'm going away for the weekend. My cousin having a, a get-together. Probably going to be drinking. I'm going to just stay the weekend at her house. But in reality, I went out and got a hotel. I knew Kayla was coming to town. And we was going to be together the whole weekend, you know. Um, she came out here. And uh, we had a really good time. It was nice to hang out with her one on one. I think it's like I said, I, I've seen her before, but we had never hung out just one on one. So after all this time of talking on Yahoo or whatever and flirting and all that stuff, it was nice to hang out. We had a good time. We did have sex with each other, which was crazy. I felt I like I felt bad when it was happening. You know what I'm saying? Because I really feel like me and Zoe's relationship was over. We just hadn't ended it. But that doesn't make what I did right, though. I, I want to say that. Be very clear on that. Um. And when Zoe would call, I would answer the phone. I never wanted her to feel like I was doing something. But I do remember at one point, she was like, Rhonda, something don't feel right. Like, you know, I kind of was looking at your MySpace page. Is Kayla, is Kayla in town? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea why. Why do you ask? She was like, you know, I saw her on somebody else's page saying that she was going to be in, in, um, in LA this weekend. Are you sure you're not with her? I was like, why would you say something like that? She was like, I don't know. Like, you know, whatever. I was like, well, do you want to talk to my cousin? I mean, I can put her on the phone right now. You know what I'm saying? She was like, nah, I'm just tripping, you know, whatever. So, y'all, if somebody ever says that, like, do you want to talk to so-and-so? You should probably say yeah, because there's a good chance <laughs> that they might not be telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? So, she, thank God she didn't want to talk to my cousin. And then I went right back to just hanging out with Kayla. So, Kayla leaves. And I, like, get all weird. I'm, like, kind of over... Like, not over her, but, like, I'm confused. Like, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I end this thing with Zoe? Where is this thing going to go with Kayla? Like, I'm just not really sure what to do. I get conflicted. And she feels... She can feel my energy shift. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not being as... In, I'm not as engaged with her anymore, you know, after she goes back home. I go through this phase, y'all, where I'm just bouncing back and forth between Zoe... And Kayla. Breaking up, getting back together, pulling Kayla along with me, hurting her feelings. I just didn't know what to do. I was confused. Because even though I wasn't really happy with Zoe, I was just like in a place of like, how can we fix this? Can can this be worked out? Can this can we get this relationship back on track? So after a few months of doing that, y'all, me and Zoe finally ended things. Like I said, we were living together at this point. I'm sure she had a feeling that I was dealing with somebody else. I'll never forget one day. Um, <laughs> she told me she was going to be moving to bed out like that weekend. This was like on a Tuesday. I went to work, y'all. She came and moved that bed right on out on my ass. I didn't have no bed for like, I didn't have no bed. I had to sleep on the couch. It was fine because the bed was hers. It just would have been nice to know I was coming home to, like, not having a bed so I can make some moves. You know what I'm saying? So I slept on the couch for a little bit. Was figuring out, like, what I was going to do. The lease was coming to an end. Um, 
So I went apartment hunting and I took Kayla with me. I mean, when I say I took Kayla with me, I would take videos and stuff and send all the videos to her, get her opinion about this new apartment I was going to get because I felt like her and I were moving towards a relationship. So I'm going to say me and... Me and um, Zoe into things, let's say like mm, February, by April or May, Kayla was back home. She had moved back to California completely and she was living with her mom, you know, so she could figure out what her next move was going to be. She had a job. She transferred her job back to California and she was just trying to figure out what her next move was going to be, right? But she was always at my house. We was damn. She was like basically living with me. You know what I'm saying? And she couldn't get enough of me. I couldn't get enough of her. She started calling in sick to work. All of this stuff, I felt like was going to catch up to her eventually. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I'm going to say by like the middle of summer, we in a relationship. Things are moving really, really fast. So now we're together. I have a new girlfriend. Like I said, she's always at my new apartment. We're having a great time. We're in this honeymoon phase. It feels good to like... You know, that exciting phase when you and somebody are together and, you know, y'all happy to see each other. And with women, things get really intense. Like, we, it would be so hard to, like, get up and go to work every day. You know what I'm saying? Because we just wanted to be up under each other all day. So, she was calling in sick. I was going to work. And what happened was they started, they ended up um, cutting her hours. Her hours got cut. I don't know where y'all, she just decides that. She gonna quit her job. I'm like, so she up and quit, didn't have a plan. All she cared about was just being up under Rhonda, and, and that was all she was focused on. And I'm like, shit. I'm like, you could at least give me a heads up that she was gonna leave. She was like, well, I have a little bit of money saved. And when I say a little bit, y'all, it wasn't that much money, okay? A couple hundred dollars, really, it's not gonna get you far. So I'm like, well, damn. Here I am in this new relationship, new girlfriend. She, she done basically moved in, y'all, at this point. She's moved in. We now live together out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere. It just kind of happened. And she doesn't have a job. So now there's pressure on me to start, you know, doing stuff. I'm working extra hours and all, all kind of stuff. Like, I'm just doing what I can to keep us afloat. You know what I'm saying? So everything is pretty good between us. Um, we get along really great. My friends seem to love her. Um, we just are seem like a match made in heaven to be honest with you you know what i'm saying things are great but i'm i mean like let's say a year goes by at this point i'm still the only one working i don't really feel like she's being aggressive with her job hunt huh? she's getting comfortable you know what i'm saying i'm making her comfortable as well but my, my job offers overtime so i'm just picking up extra hours um she living a good life. You know, she at home all day. Um, she would cook sometimes, but then that started, like, falling off. Would clean sometimes, and then that started falling off as well. So, I was doing a lot. Working, helping around the house, doing all kind of stuff, right? So, fast forward. Let's say we have about two years in a relationship. She's still not working, y'all. The recession then came... We're like in the middle of the recession at this point. So she's using the recession as a reason why she can't find a job, right? So she, her efforts to look for a job have completely stopped at this point. She's like, I can't find anything. There's nothing going on. So I'm like, look, if you're not going to work, you got to go to school. So she decides to go to school. But I had to like talk her into it though. You know what I'm saying? Like do something with yourself. Like you don't want to just be around here like not doing shit. Like, come on. So she goes to school. The one thing that used to piss me off about Kayla, she was always on her phone. Go to the bathroom holding her phone. At the dinner table holding her phone. Like, that phone was always with her. And I never suspected anything. I just felt like, damn, can you get a phone to break? You know what I'm saying? And another thing that would piss me off about her, too, is that her parents, not that her parents had to do anything for her, but when she would ask her parents for help, she would use the money that they gave to her. She wouldn't pay a bill. She wouldn't buy groceries. She would buy a new iPhone. Buy some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? She had a phone that worked just fine. But she would use that money to go buy a phone. And I'm like, what the... F like, you don't want to help around the house? No? Oh, okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Got it. So, there was that. 
fast forward to you know third year still not working y'all but she's in school so she's feeling good about herself she's feel like she's you know doing something with her life um our relationship just something ain't right like we together we have a good time together we enjoy hanging out but something is not right our intimacy is off we're not spending time together i mean we're spending too much time together she's always at the house i'm now working from home at this point y'all so we always around each other we're spending too much time together not having a break from each other so i really couldn't ask her how her day was because i was always with her um we were not having sex y'all we ended up not having sex total in our relationship 18 months that's a long damn time i don't know you like how is it possible it's very possible for things to fall apart and we were just two unhappy ass people you know in the middle of all this unhappiness y'all i asked this girl to marry me i went out and got her a ring proposed to her told my parents and everything that i was gonna propose they were totally supportive but she said yeah obviously shit why not i mean i'm you you living a good life and don't have to fucking work so why wouldn't you say yeah um and i don't know y'all like it just was not a good relationship it was not a healthy relationship we not we were not pushing each other at all you know what i'm saying like i mean well i feel like i was pushing her but i feel like she was just pushing me to make sure that i was bringing home the money you know what i'm saying i was not living my dreams as a writer i knew i wanted to write but i couldn't write because i was so busy taking care of us that I never had time to really think through my ideas and write them out and pursue them and put some action behind them. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember one point, y'all, she broke up with me. And I was just thinking, like, how dare you break up with me? We took a break in the middle of our relationship. She had went back east to her family's house talking about she needed to figure some shit out. I'm like, okay. And, y'all, I just felt real leery about her. Like, I felt like she was going to see somebody else. You know, I was asking her about her flight times, and her flight times kept on changing, and the airline kept on changing. It felt like she wasn't going to see her family. I felt like she was going to see another woman. I'm like, I feel like she's playing me. But, I, you know, I couldn't say for sure, but something just didn't feel right. You know how your instincts kick in. So, something didn't feel right. Um, She left. She left for like four or five months. And, you know, I was still all in love with her, had my nose all open, asking if she was coming back, but trying to give her space. We still was, like, talking every day. So we really didn't have separation between us because we was talking all the damn time. But then one of my exes, Trina, y'all remember Trina, my very first girlfriend, showed up around this time. We reconnected and was kind of hanging out with each other. And I was, she kind of had me to thinking, like, damn, maybe I should leave Kayla alone and just... And even if I don't rekindle with Trina, just find something else with somebody else, right? So... I told Kayla, like, look, I think I might be falling out of love with you. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. When I said that, she was like, no, I want to work things out. I want to come back home. Shit wasn't going the way she wanted it to with her family. With her family. I'm assuming she's with her family this whole time, y'all. I don't even know. I still feel kind of leery this whole time. And I felt leery because she would call me at certain times of the day. It's just like her day was real calculated. You know what I'm saying? So something just made me feel weird. So she comes back home. I end, I tell Trina, like, we can't do this. I hurt Trina again, you know, because she kind of felt like we were going to rekindle the flame. And I had to end things with her. And I told her why, like, that me and Kayla were going to get back together or try to figure things out. Um, Kayla come back, same bullshit. She's in school, not trying to find a job. The recession's, like, coming to an end. She's just like a kept woman. And she, t she has told people she was a kept woman, y'all. Like, yep, I'm good. All my needs are met. I'm taken care of. Like, I'm good. And fast forward to us finally breaking up. She ends the relationship again, like maybe a year after she comes back into town from being gone, visiting her family back east. She ends the relationship. It's like, Rhonda, I just can't do this. I'm not happy. Of course, I was hurt. Because, yes, you guys, she came back and we still was not having sex still no intimacy sleeping under separate covers like the shit was just weird we went to therapy i felt like i was the only one that was trying to work and make this shit happen like you know what i'm saying trying to figure some things out and it just wasn't working i was doing it by myself 
And you can't try to fix a relationship by yourself. That's not going to work. So she ends things. Um, and... Hmm. We... I don't know what she's going to do at this point because she doesn't have anybody, nowhere to go, can't go to her parents' house, can't go to her siblings, can't go to anybody. She ends up moving in with a friend. Let me back up. She has to stay at the house with me. She doesn't have anywhere to go. She likes it when I'm sad and moping and walking around, looking pitiful around the house. I'm in my feelings. I'm crying. I'm begging for us to try to work things out again. She's like, no, she is treating me so cold, y'all. Like the coldest shoulder. And now, mind you, she giving me the cold shoulder and I'm still the person feeding her, okay? She could at least fake that shit. Or, or maybe not. Maybe she didn't owe me that. I don't know. But I'm still taking care of her because she doesn't have anything. But she's trying to figure out where she's going to go next or move or whatever's, what's going to happen. And then one day, the Aquarius in me just came alive. Because Aquarius can be very detached people. I became so detached and was just fucking over it. Like, you know what? I've been running myself low. I haven't been doing anything for myself. I'm over this shit. Like, I'm finally free from this relationship. I was over it. And when I tell y'all, she when she, felt, when she felt like I was over it and wasn't tripping off of her, she was pissed. <laughs> she was pissed off. She like, is it somebody else? I'm like, what do you mean is it somebody else? I'm trying to fucking get my, I'm trying to pick up the pieces and move on. And you're mad that I'm doing that and you see me doing it? Like, no. So it's weird around the house, the gang attention. Let me tell you <laughs> about the straw that broke the camel's back. So one night we hanging out with a group of friends. Our friends don't really know that we're broken up, right? This is like 4th of July weekend. And we go to a strip club. A stripper gives me her number. Kayla kind of sees me and this girl talking. And she's like, did she, did she give you her number? I'm like, no, she didn't. I forgot that I gave Kayla my phone to put in her purse when we got to the strip club. Kayla, go, you know, politely unzips her purse, pulls out my phone, sees that I got a phone call and a text from a number that's not stored in my phone. She's trying to get in my phone, but luckily I had just put a code on it. But you like the pop-up screen showed that I had a text and a, um, a call from the same number. Get home. It's weird. There's tension. Y'all, she started packing her stuff. Like, I can't believe this shit. You got me fucked up. Da -da 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 -da. Packing her stuff like I did something to her. All of this because Rhonda is in a place of like, I'm cool. Like, I'm good. I've accepted the fact this relationship is over. All because things were not going the way she wanted them to go. She, I was not feeling the way she wanted me to feel. Fine, I'm about to get my shit and I can't believe this and I'm about to go. And I was like, okay, bye. And she wanted me to put up a fight. And I didn't. And that bothered her. So that's the story with Kayla. Relationship was just a mess, y'all. Started off great, started off strong. And then we held on way too long to this relationship. There was a lot of manipulation going on. Um, I did find out that she was cheating on me with other women. She was flying to go see these women. She would lie about road trips, you guys, with her mother. She would lie about going on road trips with her mother to see some old family friends. <laughs> but she was really getting flued out <laughs> to go be with somebody else. So she wasn't sleeping with me, but she was definitely sleeping with somebody else. So I'm telling y'all, I have definitely dealt with some stuff with these girls. And hey... Thank God I'm in a much better place, a much help, healthier, happier relationship. Like, man, my God. Um, Kayla does make a different appearance in my life as we continue story time. Believe it or not, Kayla went on to become my best friend, you guys. And that could get interesting. So y'all continue riding with me, hanging there. As long as y'all willing to listen, I'm willing to share. It feels good to talk through a lot of this, all right? So... I'll be back in a couple of days. You guys continue to enjoy the rest of the weekend and what's left of it. Um, until then, be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot.